You are welcome to what little we have managed to salvage. Of course, my lord. Will that be all? As you wish, my lord. Of course, my lord. Tell us then, Sir Wade. What is your plan? Nothing fancy. You, Lady Jill and I make for Buett Bridge and provoke the main host at their encampment. Sensing an opportunity to end the Guardians, the Black Shields will call for reinforcements, who will be met from the rear by parties of my brothers hidden throughout the surrounding hills. This will allow us to wage battle on the bridge without fear of being overwhelmed. While the Black Shields have an advantage in numbers, you see, they prefer to fight in small units, which we can use to our advantage. How small exactly? Small enough, now that I have you and Lady Jill for company. <laughs> I doubt I could have done this on my own. But until we arrived, that was your plan. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. So wait. The bearers from all dead have been laid to rest. Very good. Now make ready for battle. As you command. Thank you, Sir Wade. Perhaps now they will find peace. There is but one thing which will grant them peace. Putting an end to the Black Shields. And so we shall. Listen to the Phoenix go with you. How long have you been pursuing the Black Shields? Since they burned their first village. We tracked down the bastards responsible and fed their corpses to Stillwind. Suffice to say, that got their attention. It's been a game of cat and mouse ever since. Fly, Ambrosia! your command, my lord. What is it now? I told you! We bear a message for the Vicerine. From the Guardians of the Flame. Ha! You presume to tell us that a pair of filthy vagabonds a woman and a dog could guard aught against the might of the Black Shields. Then come! Die along with your flame! For Azaria! For Azaria! Your petty revolution ends here. On these our swords we swear. <laughs> Kill! 
A noble stand, albeit a misguided one. In taking it, you have but proven our point, that this land is in dire need of cleansing. I don't see any more. Nor do I. The plan worked. It did. It bloody worked. We sent every last one of the rotten bastards straight to the mud! My, uh, Lord. Perhaps this will be enough to stop the Cullings. For the time being, at least. Perhaps. Though I doubt my mother will take this loss well. She'll move swiftly to see her minions' ranks replenished. And then it will all begin again. I often wonder if the nation we once knew is gone for good. Her fields rot. Her people starve. We battle to preserve the flame that was, but for every foe we fell, another springs up in its place. Yet be that as it may, it is still our home. And we must fight for it as we always have, and always will. For as long as the Firebird's flame burns in our hearts, the Duchy cannot die. And her loyal subjects may dream of a day when the Rosarian Standard flies over Rosalith once more. So I die. Think we should fall back to Port Azolda before the garrison sends reinforcements? A sound strategy, my lord. And how long has my uncle been funding you and your comrades' endeavors? Since the beginning. Lord Byron was the first person I turned to after forming the Guardians. And had I known of this tunnel back then, I wouldn't almost have been hanged by the city guard for trying to sneak over the wall. I suppose a formal request for an audience would have appeared suspicious. And appearances must be maintained. Were the Vice Regency to catch wind of Lord Byron's involvement in our movement, they'd seize his estate and send him to the gallows, where he would be of no use to anyone. And so, though it sickens him to the soul, he plays the part of the loyal lord, 
knowing that one wrong move might prove his downfall. It is why he remains ever vigilant. Don't be surprised if he refuses you an audience. Especially since you're famously dead. Then I will have to think of a way to prove that I am neither wraith nor wrongdoer. I might have something which could help with the latter. It's the Mark of the Guardians. Display it, and those who love Rosaria will know where your loyalties lie. I shall wear it with pride. Be sure that you do. I don't want my men attacking you again. Unless you deserve it. If only Sir Tyler could have been here to see you. Or the Lord Commander. Thank you, Sir Wade. If there is ever anything you need... I know. Go on now, my lord. How accommodating. Do you really think they believe we are who we say we are? Not a chance. All right, I guess. My uncle believes we're impostors here to rob him. And means to string us up himself. Imagine my surprise when I was told my nephew had come to visit. Clive Rosfield died long ago. And for uttering his name here, you shall pay with your tongue! You would mock me as well? It is I, Sir Crandall of Camelot, loyal servant to Her Serene Holiness, Saint Sybil the Unshod. Meadow, thou vile sorcerer, for thy crimes against church and crown, I shall have thy head. Curse the infectious flax wench. E even in death, must thou plague me still? Very well. I shall open the gates of hell that thou might see thy charge once more. Bravo, Uncle. You're still the finest matter in the twins. Oh, 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 Clive, my dear boy, it's really you. <laughs> oh, you always were fond of that scene from the Saint of the Sanctuary. Never did let me play Sir Crandall. <laughs> I have a favor to ask, Uncle Byron. Rutherford, inform the kitchens. There'll be guests. We dine immediately. But, Uncle... You can't very well regale me with the tale of your miraculous preservation on an empty stomach. Go on, sit. I 
see that you use the good plates, Rutherford. So you arrived late to one of her cullings, did you? Since becoming Viserine, Annabella has been a constant thorn in Rosaria's side, but these atrocities are a new low. Something has changed. Quite what, I don't know, but the woman we knew is gone, and a monster sits in her place. A monster? For better or worse, I've been charged with governing this town, and thus must maintain the illusion of obedience. That's all I can do to aid Wade and his merry band of revolutionaries. So he's told us. You have risked much for Rosaria. Our nation will be forever in your debt. It has been twenty years, Clive. The nation your father and your forefathers fought to defend is no more. Perhaps it would be otherwise had I the courage of my brother. All right, if it's a ship you require, a ship you shall have. I have a galley in port, but recently relieved of her cargo. She can be outfitted for the voyage in a matter of weeks. So you believe us, then? About everything? Believe you? Ha! Only a fool would believe even half of the things you claim. But until tonight, only a fool would have believed my nephew still lived. And besides, I have it on good authority that Clive is telling the truth. Whose authority? On your own, of course. You've always been a terrible liar. Is that true? It's not untrue. Let's say no more about it, eh? It wouldn't do to linger on my nephew's greatest failing. The one thing I cannot believe, though, is all this about you being Sid. You were always such a good boy, but now you're quite the outlaw. Which, if I'm not mistaken, would make me an outlaw's uncle. <laughs> right then, who shall we pillage first? Brotherhood, fetch me my cutlass. This will be fun. She's a fine ship, isn't she? Once outfitted, she'll bear us across the boiling sea to Drustinus in the space of three days. Something on your mind? Monsters. When I served the Iron Kingdom, I, I did so because I saw no other choice. Because once they learned that the Lash would not move me, they turned it on those who could. And so I became their puppet. I let them pull my strings, telling myself it was not my hand that swung a sword, but another's. I removed myself from the truth so I wouldn't feel the pain it caused. And before I knew it, I no longer felt anything, anything at all. I... 
had become a monster. Jill. I don't want to be a monster, Clive. Do you understand? I want to choose a different path, a better path. To live on my own terms. But before I can do that, I need to come to terms with my past. And when you do, I'll be standing there with you, just as you stood with me. Thank you, Clive. I must atone for my sins. Only then, when it's done, will the monster cease to be. Just... Promise me that you won't die with it. Now, let's get some sleep. The journey back to Benamir is long, and there is much to tell the others. knows what awaits us in the Iron Kingdom, but Vivian could probably make an educated guess. Deadlands wouldn't be half as bad. She's taken quite a liking to Lady Callan. I didn't take you for a scholarly van. Oh, this? Well, it's Valisthea, a culinary pilgrimage. I borrowed it from old tones. Seems there's no creature in the realm so foul it can't be cooked up into something delicious. <laughs> Think I'll stick to the unfoul ones, thanks. Oh, where's your sense of adventure, Sid? Honestly. One glance at these recipes, and even you would trade in your sword for a butcher's cleaver. From spit roasts to sweetmeats, this book has them all. Ah, <sighs> what I wouldn't give to bring these recipes to life. If it's my blessing you're hoping for, then by all means. Well, I'm no hunter, Sid. The first ton of worm I came across would be the death of me. But you're made of sternest stuff. Would you help me resurrect one of these recipes? Something tells me you won't be taking no for an answer. Fine, I'll help. Fantastic! Thank you. So, dare I ask what's on the menu? Uh, Chancer's Stew. It was once a favorite among the Gormans of Oriflam, if the author is to be believed. Though Molly's never heard of it. The only problem is that while the recipe is extremely detailed in most respects, it's infuriatingly cryptic as to the main ingredient. A beast, no doubt. Most likely something that would make easy work of a simple cook with more broth than brawn, but unwanted violence. I've no idea what they might be. Does the book say anything else? Well, only that the sweetest violets sprout atop the bed of roses. Roses? Rosaria, perhaps? 
One of the butchers in Martha's Rest might know something. I'll ask next time I'm there. to the Patron's Whisper. The Patron's Whisper? Does that mean someone else is taking care of our friends' donations? Oh, no, that's still me. It's just Karen has a toll, Blackthorn has his hammer. I thought a new name might liven things up. I still catalogue every item that arrives, in addition to setting aside those tokens of appreciation the sender has specified are to be presented to you personally. Would you like to see if we have any? Business is busy. Still. Words are immortal. <sighs> Come to claim your just desserts. Here you are. All yours. Here you are. Best of luck out there, Sid. Clive! Oh, am I glad to see you? Is something wrong? It's Blackford. He ain't himself. And if I'm honest, he ain't been for a while. That normally it only takes a couple of drinks to perk him back up, but not this time. Something's getting him down, and whatever it is, he ain't telling. It's like he's lost his spark, you know? He's barely got enough fire in his belly to get the ump about stuff. But I'm thinking he might if we both bent his ear, because he respects you, innit? So, what'd you say? Fine. If you think it will help. I knew you'd understand. But if he doesn't want to talk... We let him be. He'll open up when he's ready. All right. Now, he'll only smell a rat if we both turn up at once. So, I'll go first, and you can meet us at the forge. Wait a bit, then head over when you're ready. First August, and now you. What are you pair up to? What's it got to do with me? August was worried that something had been weighing on your mind. I thought you might want to talk about it. <laughs> Did you now? I told you not to stick your nose in my business. What'd you go and do? Clive just wants to help, innit? What's so bad about that? Talk to him. You never know, you might feel better for getting it all out in the open. Please, mate. I'm worried about you. <sighs> Phil shut you up. It's nothing, really. Stupid. Not the sort of thing you bother people about. Why don't you tell us all the same? Karen and I have an arrangement. I keep an eye on Goots, and she shows me what the competition's up to. Interesting arms and armor, things like that. Anyway, the other day, she shows me a cuirass she's come by. Masterpiece of level work. Light, supple, and tougher than it had any right to be. 
made my stuff look like every clumsy shit. I should have put the bastard thing there and then just to study it, but I was too proud. And now every time I reach for my hammer, I'm reminded that I'm not the craftsman I thought I was. There. You happy? You got what you came for. Now piss off. All right. We're going. I always thought of old Blackthorn as a bit of a force of nature. Like a storm cloud full of ale. Didn't think anything could rattle him. Least of all, a stupid piece of leather. Blackthorn's always taken pride in his craft. Questioning it means questioning himself. Something tells me this is only going to get worse. If he has doubts, it will affect his work, which will only add to his problems. We need to nip this in the bud. I couldn't agree more. He said he should have bought that cuirass. Perhaps we should track it down for him. Assuming you're happy to help, that is. Too bloody right I am. Glad to hear it. First things first, then. We need to speak to Karen. Karen, do you have a moment? Blackthorn mentioned that you'd recently come by a leather cuirass. An exquisite example of the craft, from what he told us. And he ain't been himself since he saw it. So we thought we'd buy it for him. Sorry, sold it already. Didn't think Blackthorn cared for it the way he turned his nose up. But it was nicely put together, that's for certain. Even if the bloke who made it is a bit of an odd one. Happened to cross him on my travels. Makes all his stuff to order, but the fella who commissioned it refused to pay. He didn't like the colour of summit. So I took it off his hands for a fair price. You don't know where we might find him, do you? Like I said, he's a bit of an odd one. Doesn't even have a workshop. He don't trust hunters neither, which means he spends as much time out tracking beasties as he does working the rides. I see. He did tell me summit, though. Apparently, his next commission's for a set of Griffinhide Greaves. Here, there's a griffin on the hunt board. The curse breakers were placing bets on who'd bag it. Now, where the bleeding hell was excited? Somewhere in Sambrek, maybe? Care Northern, that was it. Thank you, Karen. We'd be lost without you. At least you admit it. So, it sounds like going after that griffin might be the best chance we have of finding our roaming leather worker. I'll leave the hunting to you if you don't mind. While you get on with that, I'll ask around the markets. See if I can't sniff out who he is and where he's hiding. Good idea. Hopefully one of us will be able to track him down. Griffins don't exactly make for easy prey. Let's hope our craftsman hasn't bitten off more than he can chew.
shop. Something there, boy. Could that be our man? Are you all right? Dare say I'll survive. That griffin caught me before I could get an arrow off. Must have lost sight of me in the grass, though. I'd be dead if it hadn't. More likely than not. The name's Camille. I'm a lowly leather worker, if you couldn't tell by the smell of me. Not so lowly from what I hear. Do you remember selling to a merchant by the name of Karen? <laughs> She's not an easy woman to forget. Bought a caress from me after I lost my buyer. 
quite taken with my work, as far as I recall. Didn't stop her bartering me down to a pittance, though. <laughs> she sent you for a refund? It's not her who sent me. Well, consider me flattered. You should be. He's a master of his art. And not an easy man to impress. Blacksmiths are proud folk. It's a rare thing indeed for one to praise a glorified tanner. And I don't imagine an impressive swordsman like yourself would be getting your steel from any but the best. I'd dearly love to help a fellow craftsman, but... Well, actually... I suppose you could give him this. What is it? Treated leather. Same stuff I used to make that caress. If your man's as skilled as he sounds, he'll know what he's looking at. You sure? Well, you did save my life. And thanks to you, I'll be going home with all the griffin hide I can carry. I'd say it's the least I can do. Short of showing him how to make the thing myself, that is. But there are rules against it. Secrets of the trade and whatnot. In that case, I'll see that he gets it. I'd be much obliged if you would. Right, I've got some griefs to make. You send your blacksmith my regards. Will do. And thank you. Hopefully this will sweeten Blackthorn's mood. With us. Those of us who are still here have to look after each other. Ah, welcome. Times may be hard, but if you got a gill, I got the goods. What can I do you for? Unwanted violets, if you have them. Though I'd gladly settle for learning what they are if you don't. <laughs> Boy, I haven't heard folk call them that since I was a lad. You're looking for scorpion tails. Unwanted violets is what folk used to call them back in the day. They turn a wicked purple when you boil them up. Hence the name. Used to chuck them in the pot when there weren't nothing else on offer. When there was a war on, that sort of thing. Thankfully, times aren't yet as hard as that. And even if they were, you wouldn't find anyone selling them these days. Do the scorpions still live nearby? I dare say they do. Three reeds would be your best bet. Memory serves. Thank you. You've been most helpful. What are you after? There you go. Thanks very much. Much obliged. There you go. I wanted one of those. Pretty well.
I better get this back to Yvonne before it goes bad. Did you find our mystery ingredient? I did indeed. Marvellous! Let's see. <gasps> what am I supposed to do with this? It's poisonous, surely? You wouldn't be wrong. But that's your unwanted violet. <laughs> Into the pot it goes, I suppose. Uh, wait here. I won't be long.
I present Chance's Stew, risen once again from the ashes of obscurity. Grab a spoon, Sid. Let's eat while it's hot. I'm, uh, not hungry. Well, it'll be too late once I've licked the bowl clean. Your loss. Odin's teeth. What the salt on the senses. It's like choking on swamp water. And and yet, up through the pungency, there rise complex, meaty notes. It it takes a moment to recover from such an onslaught of flavours, but never have I tasted anything so fine. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. You're. Uh... Welcome. I must share this gift. I won't rest until a steaming bowl of Chancellor's stew sits before everyone in the hideaway. A single mouthful, and Molly will be breeding scorpions of her own. I'm sure she will. Just taking quite a liking to Lady Cara. And with a bit of luck. How'd it go, Clive? Did you find him, or does the hunt continue? I found him. And he asked me to give you this, along with his regards. You're joking. said he wouldn't teach you how to work it, but that if you were as skilled as you sounded, you'd have no trouble understanding how it was done. Uh, so that's his secret. Crafty bastard. He's layered and cross-grained it. Good few times, too. I wonder it's tough. And that's no ordinary oil he's used to get that finish. Oh, this is fine work. Even finer than I thought. Yeah? I'll take your word for it. Just looks like leather to me. Still, I'm glad you're happy. Here, Clive, you didn't happen to catch the fella's name, did you? Camille, I believe. I thought as much. There ain't many leather workers in the realm daft enough to do their own hunting, see? And his name kept cropping up when I was asking around. Turns out he's from Tabor. And again, most leather workers are. But our friend Camille guards a long-held family secret, the details of which are the subject of some debate in the leather-working community. Then we better keep this close to our chests. Listen, sorry for putting the both of you to all that trouble. Should have kept my moaning to myself. Still, I'm glad you found him. This has cheered me right up. That was the idea. Clive's idea, anyway. He did most of the work. It's good to have you back, Blackthorn. Just don't expect me to go turning out work like this. There's a reason he does his own hunting. He knows exactly what eyes to look for. And that's how he gets them to layer up so nicely. And don't get me started on how much oiling this leather would need. But I reckon I can make something about as good. Something a curse breaker will have no trouble caring for. Anyway, enough narrowing. I've got work to be getting on with. Looks like we won't be needing a new blacksmith. As if there was a better one out there. Nah, it wouldn't have been the same anyway. No one spins a yarn like old Black falling in his cups. <laughs> right, now that's sorted. I've got duties to attend to. Thanks, Clive. You've given me my mate back. 